In our last video, we analyzed our first operation amplifier circuit with negative feedback. We derived a couple of very simple rules, which allow us to determine the output voltage of our circuit. Our first circuit amplified the input signal. Mathematically speaking, we multiplied the input signal by a constant factor known as the gain. But as the name operational amplifier suggests, there are a whole bunch of operations we can implement. So join us again for more complex mathematical operations realized with electronics. The inverting amplifier is the counterpart of the circuit we talked about last time. The input voltage is applied to the inverting input via the resistor R1. At the same time R2 forms a negative feedback loop by applying a fraction of the output voltage to the inverting input. To determine the output voltage Va as a function of the input voltage Ve, we apply the rules we have learned. This means Vd is 0 volts and I plus and I minus are 0 amps. As the non-inverting input is connected to ground, the potential at inverting input is 0 volts. Thus, the voltage drop over Re equals the input voltage Ve. And we can calculate the current Ie. Since I minus is 0 amps, Ie flows on through Ra and causes a voltage drop Vra. This voltage drop equals Ra times Ie. Substituting the current IE gives VRA as a function of the input voltage. By solving loop 1, we obtain the output voltage as minus VRA and get the output voltage to input voltage relation. This means the amplifier has a gain of G equals minus RA over RE. Up to now, we are able to multiply the input signal by either a positive or a negative factor. In order to calculate the sum of or difference between two voltages, we have to adapt our circuit. Next is the analog summing amplifier. As you can see, this circuit is very similar to the inverting amplifier we just talked about. We just added another input resistor RE2. Since there are two input voltages now, we apply the superposition principle. The superposition principle analyzes the impact of each individual voltage and current source on the output voltage. To do so, a random source in the circuit is selected. The voltages of the remaining voltage sources and the currents of the remaining current sources are set to zero. In a manner of speaking, we replace voltage sources by a short and current sources by an open. This is repeated until each source was selected and analyzed. Afterwards, we sum up the individual output voltages obtained for each of the sources to get the total output voltage. But be aware, this principle only works for linear circuits. This means it cannot be used if there is a single component in the circuit which does not have a linear current voltage relation. Fortunately, resistors, capacitors, inductors and even operational amplifiers to some extent have a linear current voltage relation. But now back to our summing amplifier. We arbitrarily start with VE1 and get the circuit. Again, we apply the rules for negative feedback amplifiers. This means the voltage at the inverting input and hence the voltage over RE2 is 0 volts. Consequently, no current flows through RE2. And we can remove RE2 from the circuit. We end up with an inverting amplifier and can use the result from before. The process is exactly the same for the second input source. 
superpositioning the two individual output voltages gives the output voltage of the summing amplifier. As a small example, let's assume Ra equals 2 kilo ohms, Re1 equals 1 kilo ohms, and Re2 equals 2 kilo ohms. The output voltage equals the negative sum of 2Ve1 plus Ve2. Quite the opposite of the summing amplifier is the differential amplifier, which gives an output voltage proportional to the difference between two input voltages. We again use the superpositioning principle and investigate Ve1 first. We redraw the circuit and see that we now have a voltage divider followed by a subsequent non-inverting amplifier. According to our rules, the non-inverting amplifier does not put any load on the voltage divider. Hence, the output voltage of the voltage divider Vr4 is given by R4 divided by R3 plus R4 times Ve1. Multiplying this voltage by the gain of the non-inverting amplifier gives the first output voltage Va prime. Now we go for the second input voltage Ve2 and redraw the circuit. This is an inverting amplifier with additional resistors at the non-inverting input. As our rules state that there is no current flowing into the input of the operational amplifier, there is also no current flowing through the resistors. Consequently, the voltage drop over them and the potential at the non-inverting input is zero volts. This means this circuit behaves like an inverting amplifier and we can write the second output voltage Va double prime. Superpositioning the two individual output voltages gives the overall output voltage Va. As we can see, the output voltage Va is proportional to Ve1 minus Ve2, and we can scale the individual input voltages by the given factors. For example, let's assume R1 is 4k, R2 is 1k, R3 is 2k and R4 is 3k. The output voltage would be 3Ve1 minus 4Ve2. Okay, now we know how to implement very basic mathematical operations. Let's try something more challenging. How do you feel about taking the derivative of a voltage waveform? Too difficult? Let me prove you wrong. Here comes the differentiator. The circuit of the differentiator is actually quite simple too. It's just an inverting amplifier with a capacitor instead of the resistor at the input. So we think back when we dealt with the inverting amplifier. What we did back then was to calculate the current IE, knowing that there is no current I minus flowing into the inverting input, the current IA equals IE. This is exactly the same method we apply now, but instead of the current voltage relation of the resistor RE, we use the one of the capacitor CE. And from here on, it's just like for the inverting amplifier. We calculate the voltage drop over RA and the output voltage is minus this voltage drop. The output voltage is proportional to the derivative of the input voltage and we can scale it with the product RA times CE. But we can also realize an integral with operational amplifiers very easily. This time the capacitor CA is placed between the output and inverting input. The current IE coming from the input resistor RE charges the capacitor. We use the current voltage relation of the capacitor CA and solve for the voltage VCA. The integration constant K holds the voltage over the capacitor before we start our experiment. If we just powered our circuit, the capacitor isn't charged and K is zero volts. 
we substitute the current IA with IE, which in turn is VE divided by RE. The output voltage is again minus VCA and can be written as minus 1 divided by RE times CA multiplied by the integral of VE over DT. These were the principal circuits for the differentiator and integrator. Note that these circuits do not work as intended if you build them. Non-ideal components and other influences cause the circuits to malfunction. Some alterations are required in order to get a working differentiator or integrator. But the underlying circuit stays the same. Another circuit you might want to use from time to time is the voltage follower. As you can see, it's just an operational amplifier with its inverting input connected to the output. We again apply the rule that VD is zero volts. This lets us determine the output voltage VA to be equal to the input voltage VE. This circuit is used as an impedance transformer for signal sources with high internal impedance set I. The high input impedance of the voltage follower puts virtually no load on the signal source while offering a small output impedance to drive the connected load set L. There are a lot more circuits which incorporate an operational amplifier and some of them just wait to be discovered or even invented by you. We may cover some advanced operational amplifier circuit designs in future videos. If there is anything of particular interest, please let us know and write a comment below. If you want to learn more about operational amplifier circuits, we highly recommend The Arts of Electronics by Horowitz and Hill, as well as Elektronische Schaltungstechnik by members of our institute. I'm Patrick with the Institute of Electronics. We hope you have learned something today, but anyway, thanks for watching.